Hi, in this video, we're going to look at setting up an AWS VPC using the AWS Web Console. Let's get started. Okay, so we want to create a VPC. First, let's create a uh, little diagram to tell us what we're aiming to achieve. So here we can see we have a VPC and we're setting up a 10.10.0.0 slash 16 as our IPv4 CIDR for our VPC. Within that, we're going to use two availability zones, EUS 1A and EUS 1B. And each availability zone is going to have two subnets, a public subnet and a private subnet. And these are on the slash 24. So they're going to have 250-ish hosts um, each, potentially. Um, and we can see here we have our 16, which means these two bits are basically our host bits. Um, and then here we're, assi we're assigning that subnet to zero, and we're assigning that subnet to one, two, and three. And then we're gonna be left with this last octet for our host bits. So um, create a AWS account if you haven't already, and then we're gonna jump into the console um, and have a look at the VPC setup. Okay, here we are logged into our AWS account. Um, and this is the typical homepage you might um, get. First, what we're going to do is we're going to select our region. So we're going to click on this region up here and we're going to go down to EU Island. So we've selected EU Island um, and now we're going to go to services and find VPC. Um, and we're just going to search for that VPC. Oh, VPC. There you go. And it's going to load our VPC. Now, by default, each region within your AWS account has a default VPC. And that's used by um, different wizards to kind of automatically spin up your EC2 instances. So we're going to leave that um, and we're just going to create another one. So we're going to go create VPC. And then we're given a name if we want to give it a name. Uh, what IPv4 CIDR block? So that's the CIDR block for the whole VPC that's going to span your whole region. And then if you want to assign, IPv6 to it or not. So let's give this a name of tutorial. And then the IPv side block of what we um, planned previously. So that's going to be a 10.10.0.0 slash 16. And we're going to enable IPv6 on this. We're not going to use it in this tutorial, but we'll have a look at it in the next one. And then tenancy. So the tenancy. Um, defines your default or dedicated hardware. By default, you'll want to leave this as default, otherwise it can get rather expensive running on dedicated hardware. And then we're going to go and create our VPC. So that's created our new VPC there, and we can click on that to see our VPC. So here we have our IPv4 side block our automatically assigned IPv6 side block. Now, we can't choose this IPv6 side block. It's allocated by Amazon and then all the subnets are also allocated by Amazon. So there's not a lot for you to kind of think about when it comes to IPv6. You just check the box and it works. And then we can have a look. So we can assign multiple IP4 CIDR blocks um, within a VPC, but to keep it simple, we'll just have this, this single one. Um, and then we can go on to more advanced things like flow logs in later videos. First thing we're going to do is just refresh the page and then we're going to filter um, by our new tutorial. And what this will do is it will filter everything down the side just for that VPC. Um, so if we click on subnets, we don't have any subnets, which is what we expect. Okay, so the first thing to do is create a subnet. So let's create a subnet and we're going to call this um, EUWEST 1A public. And then our subnet is going to be A, and we're going to make that our 10.10.0.0 slash 24. I'm just going to copy that so we can use it later. And then we're going to create another subnet, and inside there we're going to have our EU West 1A private. And the availability zone that that subnet is going to reside in is EU West 1A, and it's going to have an IPv4 cider block like that. And then we're going to make our EU West 1B's 
So EU West 1B, and that's going to be a public. And you see that it's, um, if you put in a IPv side block that's already been used, it's going to complain and say, hey, this has already been used in a subnet. You can't have that, which is fine. So we're going to put two instead. And our AZ that we're going to choose is B. And then we're going to create another one, EU West 1 B private. We're going to select our AZ. And we're going to paste in our side block. Create. So that's how easy it is to create our four subnets within our VPC. We can see we have our EU West 1A and our EU West 1B. Um, and then our IPv4 networks don't overlap. So we have 0, 1, 2, 3. Right. And they're all within that single VPC. And by default, they've been assigned a default root table. So let's have a look at these. So our root table is saying for any traffic um, for our subnet, uh, it is a local target. So what this does is the root table by default allows you to have one subnet and another subnet. And by having that local root in there, they know that the subnet should be able to talk to each other. And then we also have a VPC cider here uh, for IPv6 one, which basically does the same thing and says, any traffic in this VPC, you're allowed to talk to each other. So let's have a look at Internet Gateway. So an in Internet Gateway, we can just uh, pop into here and go create Internet Gateway. And then we can give it a tab. So let's call this Tutorial Internet Gateway. If we refresh a page, it should appear. Okay. Um, so something to bear in mind there is I have a filter VPC on because um, we haven't actually assigned it to a VPC. We need to turn that off, and we can see that it's attached here. So we can attach it then to my VPC, and here we can see it now it's attached. So I'm just going to turn the filter back on, and here we have our internet gateway attached to our VPC. So great, we have our internet gateway. So this will allow us to talk out to the internet. So let's have a look at our root table. And we're going to create a new root table. Now this is going to be our public root table. I'm going to call it public root table. And it's going to be within our VPC that we've specified. And we're going to hit create. And our public root table, uh, we're going to edit roots and add root. So here we can see our targets. So our target, we have our IPv6 egress only internet gateway, an instance, an internet gateway, a NAT gateway, a network interface, peer and connection, transit gateway. So we have lots of different options to choose from. We're going to choose our internet gateway. And then it's going to find us for us our internet gateway that we created just now. And then here we're going to have our 0.0.0.0.0. .0, .0, .0, .0, .0, .0, .0. So so any traffic that doesn't match these is going to be sent to our internet gateway. So we created our internet gateway, but we need to associate it with a subnet. So if we go back to our subnets, we can see our public subnet here. Um, and then we can click on our root table and we're going to edit the association. And we're going to select the public root table. And we can see here the rule for our internet gateway is there. And we're going to click on our public, edit root association, public root table. OK, so any traffic, any instances within these public subnets, when they try and access the internet, they will go out via the internet gateway. So that's how you set up a public subnet. And that's, that's what's referred to as a public subnet. It's the act of any internet traffic is going via the internet gateway. So let's do the NAT gateway um, and see how that kind of differs. And that will be used for private subnets. So first, let's go down to NAT gateways. And then we can create a NAT gateway here. And this is going to say the NAT gateway is going to sit in um, a subnet. So let's say this subnet. 
um, and that will be in so let's go with this one EU West 1A public so it needs to sit in a public subnet because it has a public interface or is given an elastic IP address um, and then can talk out on behalf of all those private IP addresses uh, private instances and we need an elastic IP address so we're going to create a new elastic IP address and that will give us a new elastic IP address allocation and we can see we have 99.82.206.108 and we're going to create a NAT gateway so we need to it says we need to edit our root tables to refer to this and we're going to close that so that's pending that will be um, starting up or provisioning within the AWS backend really but we can already refer to this so let's go to our root tables I'm going to create a new root table and this is going to be our private root table so this is the only difference between um, or this is the core difference between our private and public subnets so let's have a look at our private root table and then here we're going to edit our roots and we're going to make our 0 .0 .0 .0 .0 0 0.0.0.0.0 go via a NAT gateway and we're going to select the NAT gateway we created so any subnet that's assigned to this when it wants to get out of the internet it's going to go straight towards our NAT gateway and we're going to assign this to certain subnets so you can do it this way as well um, and we're going to assign these two subnets to our root table so there you go we can see our they've been assigned and we've explicitly assigned two subnets to our private and two subnets to our public okay so we can see that the NAT gateway has been created and it has an elastic IP address and a private IP address if we go back to subnets we can see that we've lost an IP address here and that makes perfect sense because that's where we provisioned our NAT gateway which has a network interface um, within that subnet and that's where all our private outbound internet traffic is going to go first before the NAT gateway is going to um, network address translate it and then send it out via the internet gateway so that's the basics of private and public routing another option we might want to enable is this auto assign public IPv4 address this allows instances to um, when you go through the console it will automatically check the box for you so let's do that to keep things simple so we have our public um, and we're going to auto assign and we're just going to check that box there I'm going to do it this one as well and check that box so one last time um, we're just going to have a look at this public and have a look at the root table and we see that any internet traffic is going to go out of our internet gateway and then we're going to have a look at this private one and the root table and any internet traffic is going to go out via the NAT and here again internet gateway and NAT to refer to network ACLs we'll have a look at this in a later video um, but here we can see our default rules basically and we have our network ACL policy which is saying allow everything in um, and allow everything out network ACLs are done by rule ID so they're evaluated from the first rule second rule third rule and if a rule doesn't match then it will fall into these deny rules so that's it for this video in the next video we're going to spin up some EC2 instances within our new creative VPC hi everyone thanks for watching I hope you found the video helpful if you haven't already Please give the video a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button below for some more great content on AWS, 3D printing and home automation.